Tonight we report on the police standoff in Wilson Creek and a company in Moses Lake hoping to expand their production of honey. What's happening in sports, Bob? Thanks, Alan. The Big Ben Lady Vikings roll past Northwest Indian College. Moses Lake boys basketball picks up a first round win at the Capitol Classic in Juneau. Let's take a peek at our Weather Center forecast to see how low the mercury will dip in the Columbia Basin tonight. Good to be with you, everybody. Pretty quiet conditions across the immediate area overnight. I'll let you know in just a few moments how the scenario will pan out for your New Year's Eve celebrations. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News, your number one source for local news sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. A four-hour standoff in Wilson Creek on Christmas ended when 79-year-old Philip Pearson Sr. surrendered. Soap Lake police responded to a report that Pearson took his 77-year-old ex-wife out of McKay Healthcare and Rehabilitation Facility in Soap Lake against medical advice and without approval. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, police learned Pearson was reportedly holding his ex-wife in his Wilson Creek home in the 200 block of 4th Street. The Moses Lake Tactical Response Team entered the residence after negotiations failed and the suspect was arrested. The woman was taken to a hospital for evaluation. One Grant County elected official got an early start and was sworn in before Christmas. Reporter Cameron Probert has the story. Grant County's new prosecutor was sworn in last week. Garth Dano, who has been a civil and defense attorney for more than 30 years, won his bid for the prosecutor's position in November, beating out incumbent prosecutor Angus Lee. The county's three superior court judges presided over administering the oath of office to the new prosecutor. Judge Evan Sperline urged people to have patience with the new prosecutor as he transitions from his work as an advocate for clients to working for the public, the police, and the victims of crimes. So always, the prosecutor is called upon to balance the interests of these three clients, which often are at cross purposes with each other. It is demanding work insisting on skill, <coughs> diplomacy, courage, and restraint. Dano thanked the crowd who had attended the ceremony, including several family members and police officials. And I think in our job, the primary job that we have for the, on the criminal justice system is to try to do our very best as prosecutors to keep the public safe, and the public safety is paramount to what we're trying to accomplish. For High Fiber One News, this is Cameron Probert reporting. The Moses Lake City Council rejected increasing the ambulance utility fee to $15. The council voted 6 to 1 against the increase during its last meeting. Council member Jason Nabila initially made the suggestion to increase the fee as the council continues to discuss what to do with the city's ambulance service. The ambulance service cost the city roughly $244,000 more than it received in revenue last year. City officials expect the amount to climb next year. Two citizens asked the city council to reject the increase and form a committee to examine what can be done to support the ambulance service. Council member David Cornell, the lone supporter of the increase, disagreed with the idea that the council was rushing to make a decision and said he supported forming a committee, but the city's financial situation wasn't made better by waiting. Soap Lake City Council members approved a new 2015 budget, which removed a $30,000 cut. A new budget was approved at a special city council meeting on Friday afternoon. Mayor Raymond Gravel called for the meeting after vetoing the previous budget because of a cut to the city's parks and recreation budget. He said the change would have meant laying off an employee. Council member John Glasgow, who initially approved the change, said it was necessary to avoid raising fees to pay for the position. 
Gravel pointed out the city is in the middle of studying what role the positions serve in the city. The new budget, including the $30,000, was approved by a 5-2 to two vote with Glasgow and Councilmember Robert Brown voting against the budget. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. And we'll be back right after this. the DQ five buck lunch, all this food for only five bucks, you gotta tell people about it. So I situated nice. Frosty drink next to this juicy grilled burger and fries. Get my Sunday, mm, boom. I just dropped a five buck lunch of grandma on all my friends. Get ready for a little five buck envy. Michael, we like your style. The five buck lunch, entree, fries, drink, plus a Sunday. Only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. Hello, everybody. Good to be with you. I'm Ceci Gutierrez with your local weather report from the One News Weather Center. And it is brought to you by your Bud Clary Toyota dealer, Toyota. Let's go places. Let's begin with a quick look at your headlines across the area. Frigid temperatures across the region. Overnight tonight, dry, cold, and blustery, gusting up to 30 miles per hour. And this Arctic air mass expected to remain in place. These below average temperatures as well across the entire region with uh, this cold air mass even into possibly New Year's Day across the immediate area. Normal high should be around 32, 32 registering this afternoon across the region. Average low for Efreda 20, the low was 30 and the sunset at around 416. Now across Moses Lake, a similar scenario, a couple of degrees below where we should be for this time of the year. Here's a quick look at the conditions and temperatures right outside your door. Dry, clear skies, temperatures in the mid-20s, that wind out of the north-northeast at around 18 miles per hour. Wind chill values overnight tonight just below zero. This Arctic air mass continues to filter into the immediate area. All of this precipitation exiting the region in a scattered form. Snow activity across central and eastern portions of Oregon and across inland northwest drying up, clearing up as the night progresses. And as we head into this Tuesday, beautiful dry conditions, but very cold temperatures in store for the entire area Wednesday overnight and into or better yet, Tuesday overnight into Wednesday, dry conditions expected to continue on settled weather will remain confined to central and northern portions of western provinces across Canada. Here's a quick peek as we head into this Tuesday afternoon, dry conditions. Notice these temperatures dipping into the lower 20s across the Tri-Cities area. Spokane barely in the upper teens in Ponteray around the 20 degree mark with dry conditions. Taking a closer look across the basin with mostly sun Sunny skies, Bridgeport expected to be around 21, and across Ephrata in the mid 20s. Most of Lake similar temperature, Wilson Creek, and even points northeast, similar conditions dry with these readings below average. And here's a quick look at what we can expect this Wednesday into Thursday, rolling in or ringing in the New Year's with these below average temperatures. And notice overnight Wednesday, barely around the mid teens. But as we head into the overnight hours across the immediate area, these readings in the single digits and Tuesday night into Wednesday, dry conditions with temperatures in the lower teens. This segment brought to you by your Bud Clary Toyota dealer, Toyota. Let's go places. Be right back with sports.
You don't need me to tell you that four and all-wheel drive time is on its way. But maybe you didn't know your local Toyota dealers are gearing up for the season with special savings on our top-selling four and all-wheel drive models. From tough Tundra trucks to our best-selling CUV RAV4 or Benza, the perfect blend of all-wheel drive with safety and style. Plus many others. The bottom line is exceptional four or all-wheel drive savings just in time for winter. For full details on these and other savings, visit any of your Inland Empire Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Bud Clary Ford Honda is proud to be an automotive leader in our area. Since opening our doors over 54 years ago, we have kept a firm commitment to our customers. We offer a wide selection of vehicles and hope to make the car buying experience as quick and hassle-free as possible. You can trust that we will get you into the car or truck of your dreams. Bud Cleary has an experienced and reliable service and parts department that is open extra hours to help fit our customers' hectic schedules. Come for a test drive today at 1200 South Pioneer Way. We are a proud supporter of Columbia Basin Athletics. Five players scored in double figures, and Big Ben beat Northwest Indian College 84-68 at the Skagit Holiday Tournament. Aubrey Vale paced the Lady Vikings to a round one win with 18 points. Riley Jamet added 17, Chelsea Baker had 13, and Julia Bonner and Mackenzie Windley finished with 10 each. Big Ben held a 47-26 lead at the break. Northwest Indian outscored the Lady Vikings 42-37 in the second half, but dropped the contest by 16 points. Big Bend owned the glass with a 53-26 advantage. Vail pulled down a game-high 15 rebounds. The team drained 20, 10 of 23 shots from behind the arc. The Lady Vikings match up with host Skagit Valley today in round two. The running bikes take on Olds College tonight at 9 in the opening round of the Big Bend Holiday Classic. Moses Lake boys beat Napa Christian 74-36 in round one of the Capital City Classic in Juneau Saturday. Derek Martinez and Mitch Holman hit three shots each from three-point range, and the Chiefs led 49-17 at the half. Moses Lake opened second half play with an 11-0 run to push the score to 60-17. 15 of the Trojans' 19 second half points came from beyond the arc. Holman led the Chiefs' attack with 13 points. Cesar Sandoval added 12. Ricardo Gonzalez had 10, and Martinez finished with 9. Moses Lake takes on Haynes today in round 2. Warden boys beat Moses Lake JV 52-32 to capture the Moses Lake Christian Academy Christmas Tournament. The Cougars were led by J.L. Del Delgado, 17 points. Pedro Gonzalez added 15. Warden led 15 to 11 at the end of the first quarter and was up 30 to 24 at the break. The Cougars hung 22 second half points on the board to the Chiefs eight to win going away. NFC opponent's biggest fear came to light as the road to the Super Bowl must now come through Seattle. A win over St. Louis and an Arizona loss to San Francisco wrapped up the NFC West for the Hawks. It also gave the team a first round bye and home field advantage throughout the playoffs. The Rams gave the Hawks all they could handle through three quarters. Field goals by Steven Hauschka and Greg Zerline had the score knotted at six all. A nine yard TD run by Marshawn Lynch two minutes into the fourth gave Seattle some breathing room. Bruce Irvin's 49 yard pick six with just under 10 minutes left sealed it for Seattle. Three coaches' heads were on the NFL chopping blocks, and all were lopped off at the conclusion of the regular season. The Jets axed head coach Rex Ryan. The Bears parted ways with Mark Tressman after just two seasons, and Falcons head honcho Mike Smith was relieved of his duties. 49ers head coach Jim Crybaby Harbaugh is expected to take over the helm of the University of Michigan program. We'll be right back after this. Hello, my name is Cheryl Kono. I am your local Efreda Farmers Insurance Agent. Here at Cheryl Kono Insurance Agency, our customers always come first. We don't just work here, we live here. Please stop by the office, call, email, or Facebook me for a free auto, home, life, business, or farm and ranch quote today. We are insurance, we are farmers. Come in for a free quote today. We are farmers, bum, ba, -dum, bum, 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 bum. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that 
our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. The patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Our spotlight story tonight is about how the folks at Silver Bow Honey in Moses Lake hope to grow under new management. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. The little honey bears you see in stores everywhere will still roll down the assembly line at Silver Bow Honey. The Gregg family's longtime honey packing plant is now under new ownership. Matt Ferguson, an Iraq War veteran and former government contractor for the Pentagon, is Silver Bow Honey's new chief operating officer. About 18 months ago, a uh, holding company uh, bought the company from the Grigg family, um, and we've been going through a transition for the last 18 months to the point where I came on board. Ferguson refers to Neutroganics Incorporated, a publicly traded holding company. Neutroganic's business is focused on the organic and health food industry. With the sale, Moses Lake based Grigg Incorporated will continue to produce thousands of pounds of honey for Silver Bow each year. Curtis Playstead, who works with Grigg Incorporated and that company's apiaries, explained how that will be done. We run, it depends on the time of year, but the high tide we run around 6,000 colonies. And then uh, my boss's brother, Alan Grigg, probably runs another seven to 8,000 hives. And so it, between the Grigg family, there's, there's quite a few hives out there, easily, oh, 12,000 or so. Besides Grigg apiaries, there are about 20 other beekeepers around the basin. Those beekeepers can also supply silver bow. Ferguson said growth is on the horizon for Neutroganic's future with silver bow. The goal, obviously, is to increase capacity to the point where I can um, hire more people. Silver Bow now has eight employees on the day shift and five on the night shift to keep the production line rolling. Ferguson admits he has learned a lot about the honey business since starting his new job in November. Uh, a lot of people, they go to the to the market or they come to the store and they and they see the finished product, but they don't see the hard work that goes in to putting that product together. You know, from the beekeepers. Um, to my folks that are working in the warehouse that put it, the finished product uh, and package it. Silver Bow's honey packing plant was located in Moses Lake in the 1970s after the apiary's bees were shipped to the Columbia Basin to help pollinate its growing farm fields and orchards. The company was founded by the Graff family in Silver Bow, Montana. Grigg Incorporated, which will still be the main source of honey for Silver Bow, has bees hibernating for the winter inside a cold storage warehouse in North Moses Lake. The bees pollinate almond orchards in Southern California as well as berries in Western Washington and other fruit grown in the Columbia Basin. The Silver Bow packing plant on East Wheeler Road has a retail Columbia Basin honey product shop fronting it and open for business. The 38,000 square foot Silver Bow plant packs more than 5 million pounds of honey a year, according to the company's website at silverbowhoney.com. Ferguson said he believes that the variety of honey Silver Bow produces will give it the edge in the marketplace. We also have honeycomb honey, raw honey, local honey, and that's, uh, you know, I think the variety is what sets us apart from our competitors. I'm Jeff Chu for i One News. We will be right back after this. Are your kids rough on your furniture? Things looking a little run down? Then come to More Furniture in Afreda and we can help get things back in order. We have all the top name brands made with strong quality support, including Sealy Posturepedic Mattresses. Because whatever you do in bed, Sealy supports it. The next time your furniture is in need of some replacing, stop into More Furniture in Afreda, locally owned and trusted for over 100 years. Attention business owners. The deadline is fast approaching to advertise in the 2015 edition of the Moses Lake Local Book. Don't be the only business left out. In print or online, it's the best way to reach your customer when they're ready to buy. 
Call today to place your ad by calling 877-738-9829 or by visiting us online at www.statewideyp.com. The Moses Lake Local Book Telephone Directory. Simply the best advertising. A man who told police someone had thrown a rock at his vehicle allegedly said he was driving drunk before he fled and crashed in Moses Lake. T.J. Beatty, a 29-year-old Moses Lake resident, reportedly pulled up to an officer early Sunday morning in the area of North Evelyn Drive. He told the officer someone had thrown a rock at his vehicle. When the officer noticed Beatty was slurring his speech, the officer asked Beatty if he had been drinking. Beatty allegedly said he had drank a lot, and then he drove off. The officer pursued for a short distance when Beatty crashed his vehicle. Biddy allegedly then fled on foot and was arrested shortly after for DUI, driving with a suspended license, eluding, obstruction, and possession of methamphetamine. In Northwest News, Mars Hill Church held its final Sunday services this weekend. The Seattle Mega Church will close its doors on New Year's Day. The church fell on hard times this year due to financial problems and the resignation of its founder, Mark Driscoll. But one Mars Hill pastor says he only has good memories of his time at the church. The release of an Oregon woman from a prison in East Timor was a big Christmas present for her mother. But as Lyle Aaron reports, her mom won't rest easy until her daughter is home. Bernadette Kiro got a call from a lawyer on Christmas Eve that her daughter Stacy Addison was being released from prison. She was able to call me on his cell phone and, you know, uh, of course I was crying, you know, happy and just really good to hear her voice. Addison was arrested over two months ago when a fellow passenger in a cab was found with methamphetamine. While that passenger has said Addison wasn't involved, Addison's been behind bars until yesterday. She. I, of course, was happy and to be out of there, but uh, just kind of in shock. But Addison can't leave Timur until she gets her passport back. And I've also heard that they can keep her for the trial. Caro is still cat-sitting for her daughter, and while Addison's release made for a Merry Christmas, Caro is still hoping for an even happier New Year. That she can have that passport in her hand get on a plane and, you know, come home. In Klamath Falls, this is Lyle Aaron's NBC2 News. A woman is reunited with her first car, a 1967 Mustang, 28 years after it was stolen. Mariana Hicks has the story. Oh. It's absolutely amazing. The license plates to Linda Alsip's 1967 Mustang are finally being put on after 28 years. That's because someone stole her car less than a year after she bought it. Kept my plates. I never, I don't want to say I gave up hope, but I did give up hope. It was just a wonderful memento to have from having your first car. But, you know, now actually having my first car back, it's, it's a phenomenal feeling. No one knows exactly where the car has been since 1986. All we know is someone bought the classic. When a California Highway Patrol trooper was performing VIN inspections on it, he noticed something wasn't right and his gear started shifting. The officer, through uh, his due diligence, a lot of investigation, uh, was able to uh, verify that uh, it was stolen, even though a lot of the uh, paperwork and everything had been lost or had been uh, purged through the system. The fine revved up memories in Linda's mind, memories of her late father. He taught me how to change the oil in vehicles on this car. Um, he's no longer with us, so it's, uh, it's very bittersweet. Also bittersweet, the fact it was CHP who recovered the car, the same agency who gave her her first ticket in her very first car. It's like winning the lottery. It just, I mean, it happens to some people, but very few and far between, and for it to happen to me is just an amazing feeling. And that's going to do it for us here at I-501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.